I have relived this particular day many times. The weather is always flawless, and so is Father's mood. It is a golden memory, and I am suspicious of it. I keep looking for one black cloud in the sky, for some premonition of what was to come. But I can't find anything, not a single clue. Father had been let out, and Mother was laughing. Perhaps it really was a happy day. Would you like to live there? Cowboy. I write this sitting in the kitchen sink. I have a grand stand view of my relations, and it depresses me. Ten years on, nothing Father said would happen has, and there have been other shocks. My hands have gone green. But doesn't it make you feel godlike turning things a different colour? We have acquired a stepmother for a start. Brackets, not wicked. Nothing will get it off. Have you tried all the perfumes of Arabia? We can't get any more credit at the stores. Is it any wonder? I've been drawing up our accounts. Income, nil. Outgoings, how much is the rent? He hasn't paid it for two years. We'll end up living in a ditch. At least the landlords shuffled off this mortal coil. It's not unmitigated gloom. I was looking for my cardigan. Oh, my love, I've got this sudden mania for dying. It is going to look rather wonderful, a cross between samphire and lichen. Well, don't let me interrupt the game.
don't mean it, Rose. Get off, Topaz. You're not our mother. I do my best. Well, it's not good enough. I thought about going to comfort them, but it would only have inflamed the situation. Someone has to keep a lid on things. Mother always did, when she was alive. Rose. I don't think you should start threatening to go on the streets. You'd never be able to marry anyone after that. Least of all a wealthy man. You'll never meet any men locked up here. Beyond the reach of love. And it will kill me. I would have thought that love was the murderous thing, not the lack of it. I am never going to fall in love. Life is dangerous enough. Oh, thank God for that at least. What? The postman's coming up the drive. As manager for the Scotney Hall estate, this office begs to inform you, etc., etc. We respectfully request that the rent outstanding for the period June 1934, March 1936, be forwarded to this office without delay. Well. Wow. Open the other one, it's from the publisher. The royalty check always comes in the spring. Oh. Nothing this year. Nothing? Are there any biscuits left? There's never been nothing before. First time for everything. <laughs> a bucket for the leak in the roof. Oh. Did I interrupt your work? No. I was reading Death on the Nile. Is there anything I can do to help? What makes you think I'm in need of assistance? Father, Jacob Wrestling was a wonderful, groundbreaking book. There was never going to be a sequel overnight. Meaning? Meaning, it will come. How old are you now? Seventeen. And you still believe in fairy tales? I will not give in to panic. I'd be as mad as the rest of them if it wasn't for this diary. Stephen is like a rock. We haven't paid him for six months. He could just pack his bags and go, but he says he'll never leave us. Ugh. Marjorie. Why must you be so monotonously grim, Rose? I feel grim. Right now, I'd sell my soul to the devil for a roast beef dinner and a tangy lipstick. Why don't you wish on the gargoyle? You could pretend that was the devil. A ladder that will reach. We haven't got one, Miss Rose. He's not a servant. Blow the candles out, all except one. for enterprise. Be careful, Rose. Careful? I can't go on living like this. Please. I'll do anything.
It's whole nut. Oh, Stephen, you shouldn't have. Don't you like whole nut? I mean, you shouldn't have spent your money on me. If there is any food in the house. Now, have you got everything you need? A roaring fire, concealing draperies. What more could a lady want at bath time? Wireless would be nice. Chocolate is luxury enough. Get you some without nuts next time. Stephen. Topaz has said that viewed from a certain angle, Stephen looks like all the Greek gods rolled into one. I can't see it. And it's probably just as well. I've known him since I was seven. He's like a brother to me. Anything else would be much too confusing. Come in. Hello? Hello, anybody home? Somebody said, come in. Can you believe this place? It's like something out of a storybook. Yeah, the House of Usher. Hello? I'm sorry, we have a car stuck in the lane. Do you have a horse or something? Actually, no. Don't do this to me. We need a motor tractor and some heavy gauge chains. Come on, I'll show you the problem. You stay here. Soak up the atmosphere. I should warn you. I'm having a bath behind here. I'm sorry. Is your mother at home? No. Do you need this? Oh, thank you. I'm Simon Cotton, by the way. Cotton? We were on our way to Scotney Hall. Are you related to Sir William? He lived there until he died. Ooh. <laughs> the kid's gone to a farm with Beto. Oh, hi. Is there a madhouse around here? Only we thought we saw an escapee up by the lane. <clears throat> this is my brother, Neil. We did see a strange woman in the field. She looked a bit disheveled. <laughs> she was stark staring naked, Simon. Oh, I can't imagine who that was. Oh, I thought you were a child. No. Are you here on holiday? I'm actually Sir William's grandson. Our father died a little while ago in Montana, and I seem to be in charge of the estate now. Rose? Rose, dear? must be an amazing source of inspiration. We don't own it. You do. Do I? Do I? Do you hear that, Neil? I own the castle. That's wonderful, Simon. Could you go to the back and help with the pushing, sir? Yes. We must talk more about your work. Well, it would, uh, it would be my pleasure. <laughs> For crying out loud, will these bloody cataracts and hurricanes never stop? Oh. Are you ready, Neil? They didn't say anything about the rent. Those boys are very taken with you, Rose. How can you tell? I've always had antennae for the currents of attraction. I shall have to clean the drawing room in case they call again. Rose Cop. Mrs. Rose Cop. Mrs. Cop. 
Which one do you like? Simon. He's the eldest. It's his estate now and his fortune. Was Sir William the knight or a baronet? If he was a baronet, then Simon's Sir Simon. I'd be Lady Cotton then. Rose, you're making too much of it. I mean, they might ask us to parties and things, and that would be wonderful. But you couldn't marry that man with the beard. I'd marry a chimpanzee if he had money. Simon, you cannot stay in this country. You either get washed away by the rain or sucked down into the mud and never seen again. I don't want to buy a ranch in California. Oranges are wonderful things. I'm sure growing them is a very stimulating pursuit. But I'd go mad. Oh, and you'll stay sane in that pokey old mansion. Getting it cleaned and building bathrooms for mother. How many mirrors does a dame with one face need? Uh, she's never stayed anywhere in Europe that wasn't a hotel before. If I don't get the plumbing fixed by the time she comes, she'll take one look at the place, head straight back to the Queen Mary. I guess I don't know her quite as well as you do. So, who's the artist in the family? Her. It's called War and Peace, based on the novel. I think it might work better on a circular canvas. Why are you all dressed in green? Simon, you may turn the pages for me. I'm afraid I don't read music. I don't either. That need not detain us. Come on. give you a nudge each time. Christ, <laughs> you were lucky to get out alive. She wasn't like that last night. Did I do something to encourage her? You own Scotney Hall. 7,000 acres in their house. And they obviously don't have a scent. She can't help that. Well, she can't help being so darn obvious. But if you want a pack of insane bras chasing after you in theatrical costumes, that's your choice. One insane bra. My god, I was embarrassed for that girl. We're gonna have to drop him, Simon. If we don't, you can end up in a very awkward situation. He's dangerous. I guess so. It's a pity we didn't see that kid again, though. The one with the glasses or the one in the bathtub? The bathtub. It's quite funny. A bit consciously naive, don't you think? I feel worse about dropping the old man. I wanted to help him, but I guess he probably is a drunk, like people say. If only we could afford to send her to the cinema, she'd have a much better idea of how to behave. It's too late. I've got this brick wall sort of feeling. They won't come back. Please don't. It's broad daylight. It brings me release. You want me to run mad? What did you think of them? The Americans. I don't know. They weren't like anyone I've ever met before. Did you think they were handsome? No. I mean, they were incredibly well turned out, but not naturally good looking, like some people.
Miss Cassandra. I wish you'd stop calling me Miss. It's just not the way things are anymore. The first day we ever came here, my mother said that you and Miss Rose were young ladies. And I also addressed you respectfully. You always did. She said that I was never to presume. Would I... Would I be presuming if I asked you to come for a walk with me? When? When the bluebells hurt. No. You wouldn't. This one for next time it uses the keys that don't stick. The very thought of you. Rose thinks she gave an irresistible performance. I ought to tell her the truth, but I can't bear to. She's the only woman in the house with a smile on her face. The salt, pass the salt, pass the salt. Oh, Rose! Damn it, Rose! You know he's got a perforated eardrum. Oh, well, I suppose you'll go deaf now or die, and I'll be held responsible. Stop it! Stop it! Why don't you learn to control yourselves? I haven't lost my temper for years. It's just as well. You think what happened last time? That's enough, Rose. You don't think they found out about Father, do you? No, I'm sure they didn't. How could they? So why didn't they come back? I went out of my way to be flirtatious and provocative. That's what men are meant to like. There's no way out now, is there, Cassie? To kill one's wife with a cake knife would be an extraordinarily tedious business involving sawing her to death. <laughs> Take him down. We've been living in a boarding house. Only for four months. It won't happen again. Girls! 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 Aunt Millicent is dead, and she has left you a portion of her wardrobe. I hope it's the door. <laughs> She hated ferns. And what are they doing in a shop? They're not new. The lawyers put them in cold storage. I give up everything I have for a little black suit with suede accessories. Give up everything. 
dicen? Oh, Rose, can you smell bluebells? And smell heaven. Take a dozen pairs, please. Rose! I look like a bear. <laughs> it is bear, madam. And young madam's is monkey. How much do you think they're worth? If I might point out, madam, this is a high-class department store. We do not deal in second-hand goods. We only refrigerate the furs of favoured clients. Aunt Millicent had a house full of beautiful things. Why did she have to leave us these? She was never the same after Father married Topaz. When they were cutting the cake, she said to me, they have married for love, and one can only pray for them. Stone Park? Did you ever see a grizzly hug a guy to death? No, dear. Neil, I'm telling you, I've seen a bear. The circus has just arrived. He must have escaped. It'll be heading Look towards the Rose, village. Come on, do something. Listen, everybody, in the waiting room now. Come along, you two, madam, into the waiting room now. Quickly, come along. Miss Sandra! Miss Rose! Very cunning creatures. So don't let the dog go until I say. Okay. We so tried to head away from the railway line. Simon, lead your party over to the right and fan out in the direction of that church. Come on, come on. Get moving. Go. I'll go this way. <laughs> Go back to the station. Wait for me there. Wow. Rose! Stand back. Let me get some air. Is she all right? In a state of shock. Well, you must take her home in our car. What happened to the bear? Killed it. It was thrashing and rolling in the river and trying to get out. So I took the pitchfork and I shoved it in its neck. Right in the jugular, first time. Then it twitched all over and foamed a little at the mouth. And then it groaned. And it died. Did a very lucky escape. Neil, be careful with her. Stephen, what happened to her? My lantern went out. I'm taking you home. So 
he grabbed my arm and said, why are you running away? And I said, because I didn't want to see you or your stupid bearded brother either. <laughs> In fact, you can both go to hell. And I slapped his face. Oh, Rose, what have you done? I'll tell you what I've done. I've got us an invitation to dinner at Scotney. Mrs. Cotton invited us all. One week today. And so it was all hands to the pump. Topaz, haunted by the thought of Rose's slaps and insults, has decreed she will dress like a doll and behave like a lady. You'll need to learn a slow fox, a quick step, a tango, and how to smoke. Can't I just do something sparkling with a fan? No. I'm already regretting the Kremlin. One can overdo Victorian charm. I keep picturing us walking. I put bluebells in to get myself in practice. Then I add twilight and give us things to say. It's getting dark. I won't let the flame go out. Can you smell bluebells? I can smell heaven. And there, my imagination always fails completely. I obviously don't want to kiss him at all. Or do I? Your face has gone really, really red. I'm sorry. I've changed my mind. Anyway, it's rubbish about him looking like a Greek god. From now on, I am going to concentrate on Rose's quest for love. We have put the rumba into our repertoire, just to be on the safe side. Slow down the arms. Slow, good slow, slow. <laughs> I was too forthcoming when they came to call. I think the problem was mostly with the tea gown. What do you mean the problem was mostly with the tea gown? I heard Neil talking to Simon that day. I was in the hayloft. What did he say? What did he say? He c called you an insane broad in theatrical costume. He wanted Simon to drop us. He did, did he? Well. Shan't forth come again. Hold still. I'm holding still. I thought we'd sold these. They're only pawned. I got them back. Are you wearing lipstick and powder and rouge? It makes you look ordinary. I mean it too. I want us to look like a viable family, Maureen, for Rose's sake. I don't want to look exceptional. If tonight. you look exceptional, I look like someone too. You are someone. Wash your face, please. Unpin your hair. Give me something to be proud of. It was a highly intellectual gathering. Aubrey Fox Cotton is a cousin and an architect. He recognised Topaz at once from a series of avant-garde etchings she once modelled for. She was terribly glad she'd taken her disguise off. I take it you've tasted your first champagne this evening. One of life's nicer rites of passage. <laughs> what do you think? It reminds me of very good ginger beer. <laughs> Without the ginger. <laughs> Sweet. His wife is called Lida. She wears too much lipstick. 
Are you appalled by my table manners? Oh. <laughs> just can't get the hang of using all this cutlery the English way. Of course, Mother and Simon find the whole thing divinely elegant. I tried it, but I thought I was going to starve to death. When this hall was originally built, its occupants ate with daggers in their fingers. It'll probably last until the days when men dine off capsules. Fancy asking friends over for capsules. <laughs> <laughs> no, the capsules will be taken in private. Well, by that time, eating will have become unmentionable. Pictures of food will be considered rare and curious and only collected by rude old gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in the United States on my second lecture tour, they held a banquet for me in a, in a place called Boulder. Mr. Mudmain, how long is it since you actually published anything? Twelve years. Is it drink? Or, or do you have psychological problems? <laughs> Mother! Well, you didn't get up and run out of the room. Or attack me with a knife. Malicious wounding. Not quite a capital offense. If your assault had been more competent, I should have been obliged to bar my door. Or send your younger son after me, with a pitchfork. <laughs> I always employ shock tactics with men of genius. One has to employ them in public, or the men of genius bolt. Tell me, are you unique, or have all American women become more menacing of late? You will find me as menacing as I need to be, Mr. Mordman. Your voice has been silenced long enough. Well, that's because there can be no creativity without stimulus. I'm glad we're in the same opinion. I'm treading on my feet. So stop making up your own steps. I didn't ask to dance with you. you could have refused me. to the terrace with me. We could take a little air. I'm not hot. Besides, it's a slow dance next. Ah, it is not. It's a rumba. And I've promised it to Simon. I should have to ask you to rein me in on this one. I've been told by rumba like a rubber ball. you have on? You mean you think it's theatrical? Oh, no. No, no, no. Picturesque and original, certainly, but not theatrical at all. My family. I think they're a very charming, highly individual bunch of individuals. <laughs> <laughs> they make me nervous. Would you like to try it? Go right ahead.
I don't suppose I'd have much of an appetite if I was actually being cast. <laughs> Where have you been? We were in the long gallery, looking at pictures. Never mind all that tedious ancestor worship. I'm going to photograph this. Would you like some more? Stephen, this is my card. Five guineas a pop. I'd like you to consider it. Thank you. I will. You aren't going to go. Why are you? It's, it's just, I mean, five guineas. That'll buy a fair few bars of whole nut. Stephen, can I get you anything else? So William always used to send us a ham at Christmas. It was greatly missed last year. Thomas. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Rose hasn't said a word since we got in. I am going to pretend I don't care what she's thinking. Can I tell you something? When we got back to the dining room, I suddenly imagined being in bed with Simon. You didn't? You wouldn't understand. No. What was it like? It was peculiar. But bearable. Even with the beard? I sort of skirted round it. If only I could get him to shave. Wouldn't you rather have Neil? He's got a nice, clean face. No, I wouldn't rather have Neil. You can have Neil. I'd marry Simon even if I hated him. God, I've never seen anything more beautiful than Mrs. Cotton's bathroom. Peach-coloured towels. Rose, there isn't a towel on earth that could make up for marrying a bearded man that you hate. But I don't hate him. You're not in love with him. I want to be. I've no idea how much I want to be. I don't know why I'm excited. What it is I really feel. Perhaps if you kissed or something. I'm not going to let him until after he's proposed. Otherwise, he might just kiss me and run and not propose at all. Why would he do that? Well, I wish we knew more about men. I keep trying to imagine what Mother would say. There must be signs you can study, signals you can read. I think I realized then how little we have to go on, how desperate we are and that the thing we know least about of all is being women. Three teas, two luncheons and a... It's only been five days since we went there for dinner. I just wish you'd tell me what you and Mrs. Cotton find to talk about. Did you not talk about anything? We converse, and that's different. Elspeth is an extremely stimulating woman. Oh, that bloody hound! Close brushes on the dresser. Is there nowhere a man in dark trousers can sit in this house? And why are you wearing your London suit? Because I'm going to London. Do you want me to start writing again, or don't you? I knew it. She's inspiring him. His temper has been getting worse. God, I'd let him tear me limb from limb if I thought it would unleash him. I hope I'm not tempting fate. I keep imagining Rose's honeymoon in Paris. I put flowers by the bed and think about her, waiting. I can't decide between a pink negligee with swan's down trim or duchesse satin in classic eau de Neal. But she's always just a tiny bit afraid. Playhouse? It's, um, it's where I come to write. Like father, like daughter. Except I've written 147 pages. I can't help him that rain pours through his study roof. I'm suspending the rent until I've had it repaired. Is Rose at home today? She's gone to the village to buy soap. 
Shall we walk over there? I'm sure he was never going to stab Mother, but it must have looked quite bad to the next door neighbor because he jumped the fence and tried to grab the knife off Father. The neighbor got punched in the stomach and Father got four months. And then he stopped writing. And started reading detective novels. Well, I can't work it out. It's a complete mystery all on his own, the case of the buried talent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he should really see an analyst. An analyst? Yes. The right person could take him back to the time he spent in jail and find out why there's still a part of him imprisoned, locked up. Oh. He'd never agree to that. Father says all psychiatrists are con men. <laughs> Besides, it would mean he'd actually have to talk to someone. <laughs> Well, doesn't this make the perfect picture? I feel like I'm painted on the lid of a candy box. Did you get the soap? They'd run out. Mia was buying cigarettes. Would you like a lemonade? Can't I have the same as Rose? Crumb de month, of course. I think your sister chose it for the contrast with her hair. No, no. Just, just there, dear. The colors look so pretty. Simon! Go get the beer with the picture of the hen on it. It's disgusting. You pick it, I'll buy it. Neil hates me. He thinks I'm going to take Simon away from him. Do you know their parents kept them apart for 14 years? Did they? I shan't let him interfere. I don't care what he wants. picnic we went on with mother and Paul when they forgot the food? Yeah, and we had to buy it in a shop. And mother had to cut the bread with a nail file. <laughs> that, uh, that was a funny day. <laughs> they took us out because they meant to tell us they were divorcing, but they couldn't in the end because the chicken and the plates and the napkins hadn't been packed. And they were at a loss as to how to be civilized. We never did find out how they decided which of them would take which one of us. Who would you have picked, Rose? I'd have put you both in a home or sold you to a chimney sweep. <laughs> 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 I made a mistake with Rose. I thought she was affected when I first met her. Artificial or maybe mannered or something. She's not. She's natural and spontaneous. Quite unlike anyone I've ever met before. I suppose she is. And so are you. No. I'm really glad that we met you all. I'm glad that we came. But look out! Have you seen Rose doing cartwheels? <laughs> Have you ever seen such a change in a girl? Well, this must be a fresh air personality. <laughs> yeah, the question is, how many roses are there? that ham. We haven't got a decent table to eat it off. There are doors. They could be taken off their hinges. Oh, what's the matter? Your father's invited the Cottons to dinner. All of them? And the Fox Cottons and the vicar. He's been in London with her. Elspeth. They've had an assignation at the British Museum. Elspeth is my patroness. We were doing some research. Oh, people use that place for nothing oh. but assignations. Oh. I used to meet you there myself when I was married to Eduardo. In the mummy room. Oh. It can't be done. And we're so, so close to the only thing that's going to save us. Should we try to get the dinner cancelled? No. Don't you see? Simon has to propose to me now, before he meets somebody else or gets to know me better. If only I could get him on his own again. You will. I promise you, you will. 
They didn't seem to notice it was their ham we were serving. Or that they got the biggest portions. Tell me James did our visit to the mummy room provide much inspiration? Oh, well... Would you believe it, Mrs. Mortman? We came across two mummies in separate cases who were actually husband and wife. Meticulous hieroglyphs told the whole story. And there they were on opposite sides of the room, gazing mutely at each other through their barriers of glass. Mm. I've known marriages like that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the Mother. pity of it is, Mrs. Mortmain, I haven't designed a building that satisfied me in 15 years. I'm hoping to persuade Simon to let me remodel Scotney or this place. Do you know, I've never even seen beyond the ground floor here. I've been waiting for a guided tour. I'll show you round. Let's go up on the battlements. That is a great idea. Do let me join you. It's a cloud away night, and I haven't seen the Pleiades in ages. Oh, such a soft little constellation. I prefer something much more angular. Something is damping your fire, Mrs. Mortmain. My fire dies when it is not required. Aubrey. The besieging force would have a great big sling known as a trebuchet and they would use it to fire rocks over the ramparts. This is not what he meant when he asked for a guided tour. You can't trip over your skirt or something. He'd have to grab your arm to steady you. It'd be a start. You promised me I'd get to be alone with him. But it's out of my hands. You promised. Would anybody like to bathe? Bathe? In the moat? It would be like being disemboweled with an ice axe. Rubbish. We keep them up here to stop the drafts. There's only one pair, unfortunately. Why don't you wait here for your turn? Come on. <laughs> I don't know if these are going to fit. Stand by for musical Whoa. accompaniment. This is like Alaska. <laughs> well, I want to see you suffer, too. I'm going straight back inside. Oh. Well done! Now that really is romantic. It's a shame we're not in love. And that it's so darn cold. It's fine if you keep moving. Are you okay? It's a bit weedy just here, that's all. Oh, for Christ's sake, Cassandra. Can we please go inside now? No, I'm really enjoying it. Look at the moon. Come on. Before we catch pneumonia. The towels are upstairs. Wait for me in the kitchen. <sighs> Will you kiss me now? Say something, brother. Rose, I'm sure you know everything I'm wishing you. <laughs> Do 
Took me swimming deliberately. Of course I did. I'm not trying to be a bit happy for them. Will you just get the hell out of here and let me get dressed? Only if you tell me why you don't like Rose. Because she's a gold digger. She is not. She is, and you damn well know it. And you're no better. How, how dare you? How dare I do what? Tell the truth? with him. <laughs> Was it the kiss that did it? A kiss can do a lot of things. <laughs> oh, don't cry. Please don't cry. <laughs> I'm going to take such good care of you all. <laughs> and now they've all gone to arrange a London wedding. Father went too to keep an eye on Rose, and Topaz went to keep an eye on him. I was miserable for a week. I wondered if I envied Rose. I scoured my innermost heart and realized I just missed her. She had gone from me for good. And the thought of Neil despising her was more than I could bear. Dear Neil, Rose is in love with Simon. She offered it up herself that night after he proposed. She was once honest enough to admit that she would have married him even if she'd hated him, so I believe her. I value her truthfulness. I hope you value mine. And please, don't hold our having been so poor against her. With love, your future sister-in-law, Cassandra. Dear Cassandra, please draw a picture of the bridesmaid's dress you want and send it by return. Topaz keeps coming up with sketches. You can imagine what they're like. You won't recognize me soon. I've been taken in hand. I have a permanent wave and my own account at Simpsons. The shop smelt exactly the same, like heaven and bluebells. And I saw that assistant who said they didn't deal in second-hand goods. She was all smiles this time. I've always wanted a daughter to dress. <laughs> I kept wishing you were here. Or I was there. By the time you get this, it will be Midsummer's Eve. Will you do the pagan rites? Will you do them one last time, for my sake? was in no man's land. I knew that when dusk fell, I'd be doing something childish for the final time. Meanwhile, I told myself sunbathing naked was a prelude to the rites. But I couldn't explain the thrill in the pit of my stomach, the tight, coiled feeling. Was I rehearsing something?
Don't go too close. Hi. Flying visit. I had business on the estate. Has Rose come home? She had a fitting for a wedding dress. Are you all alone too? I did this with Rose every summer. It started as a game. But after a while, we really did think the gods could hear us. We never dared not do it after that. Of course, Mother panicked if we danced too near the flames. And then she died. And the next year, we danced even nearer and went wild. Rose told me. You miss her. It seems wrong when she's so happy. When I first saw Neil after Father's funeral, it was amazing. We talked all the time. We stayed up all night talking. Now sometimes we sit not saying anything at all. Rose and I used to do that. Did you? I don't know. Having someone else around is new to me. It's pretty much an only child for years after the divorce. So much was messed up. Really want to get it right this time. Would you like to see how we finished? On a ceremonial cry? Please. Don't you dare laugh. Never. I thought Rose would love Debussy, but I took her to the Wigmore Hall last week, and she sat there looking, not bored exactly, just blank. She seemed further away then than she does now. Do you like it? It's beautiful. Makes me think of Dover Beach. We are here upon a darkling plain. Hmm. It's called Eau Claire de Lune by the light of the moon. You're much, much more clever than such a pretty girl has a right to be. I look a lot prettier when I'm not standing next to Rose. We talk an awful lot about Rose, don't we? I suppose she's the thing we have in common. Getting late. I'll drive you home soon. But would you dance with me first, Cassandra? Please?
make a habit of this sort of thing. Nor do I. It was only a kiss, Cassandra. It was my first kiss. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it fell short of your expectation in any way, then I apologize most sincerely. I don't think I'm sophisticated enough for this. I'll drive you home. I kissed you, Cassandra, because you've been so sweet and funny all evening. And I wanted to. I kissed you. And that's all. Don't tell Rose. I'm in love with her. She's my sister. What does he mean, funny? What does he mean, I kissed you and that's all? Do Americans kiss each other all the time? Does he think I wanted him to kiss me? He belongs to Rose. Rose, who said a kiss can do a lot of things. Not me. I said I'd never fall in love. I said love was a murderous thing. It is and I'm walking on air. I hate Rose like poison in my fantasies. Sometimes she comes into the room and sees us kissing. And sometimes she doesn't. I don't know which is worse. Father! Came back on the milk train. Saw Stephen at the station. Jacket on, going somewhere. We're supposed to be able to afford shop cake. I thought I'd make an effort. It's my birthday. Today? 17. 18. Can't see it somehow. Still remember you in that perambulator thing. Simon sent his regards. Did he? Said you kept him greatly entertained the other night. Oh. Probably made a change from worshipping Rose. No man on earth should be so violently in love. Puts him at such a disadvantage. What are you looking for? The kippers from Saturday. They'd gone off. Corporeal transition. I need something made of flesh. Ah. I'm shaking and sick with the things I have imagined. Dreams are like a drug. The magic doesn't last. And then the pain is worse than knives. Evolution of the cosmic universe. I've read half of it. It's quite good. Oh, Rose remembered. It's from Simpsons. I had to go to King's Crypt to get it today. I've been saving up.
It's a wireless. Oh, Stephen. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It, it's battery powered. Oh, Stephen. It's from, from Simon. It's a sewing machine. It's not. It's a gramophone with integral wireless. It's probably mains dependent. He'll have forgotten we don't have electricity. It's battery powered too. I'll go and practice my bowling then. Poor student. Be careful with him. Can I tell him the truth? Will it hurt? Stephen. Simon didn't have to work to buy me a present. No. That was my privilege. I haven't got a lantern. It'll get dark. I have to hold my hand. No. It'll make us both feel better. This isn't why I came, Stephen. I'm not coming after you. Why did I let it happen? Why did I suddenly want him to kiss me when my whole heart ached for someone else? When I went there to tell him how I felt, I've been cruel to Stephen and betrayed myself. The memory of Simon's kiss is ruined. My future is wretched. Yes? I'm sorry. It wasn't wrong if we love each other. to see me for a bit. I had a telegram from Lida. I got to go to London to see a producer about a film part. I'm sorry about the kissing. What are you doing? There are 2,000 characters of the Chinese alphabet. Willow Patton distilled a sweeping saga of passion and betrayal into one perfect elliptical pictogram. I wanted to break it down at random, assess whether meaning would remain. What are we going to do for plates? <sighs> He's getting worse. He has asked for ink twice. He's asked at the stores for coloured chalk and the dandy. I got a letter from Rose yesterday. You didn't say? She said not to show you. She feels guilty at having so much when you've got nothing. 
three pairs of three-quarter length Hermes glacé kid gloves at 12 guineas per pair, one lavender satin nightgown with marabou peignoir from Rigby and Pella. Three whole pages. Then she put a total at the bottom. Added up wrong. I had to look marabou up in the dictionary. And peignoir. This isn't like her. It isn't like an engaged person. She doesn't mention Simon once. Not once. Our wicked keeper's sister's getting married, and it's Gerald, 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 every other word. She promised me she was in love with him the night they got engaged. I can't let her sacrifice herself. You'll stop, miss. The circular aperture giving way to the entrance hall. All glass brick. This is the best thing we've done in years. Where's Rose? Matinee, all of them. Apart from Neil, he's moved into an hotel. I've had matters to attend to. What sort of matters? I've been looking for rooms. I can't flourish here, Cassandra. In this flat? In this family. I thought I could move your father to great things, stir all the genius inside him, but I couldn't. And it's paralyzing me. He's been terribly feverish lately. Imagine if he wrote something and you weren't there to read it. Elspeth Cotton can read it. He'll show her first. I'm going to get cards printed, put myself about. You mean with Aubrey? Not exclusively, no. Try to understand. I need to be in touch with artists. Father's an artist. Not because of me. London used to be my world, but I'm nearly 30. Flesh fades. I'll lose my place in life if I don't apply myself. Is that all you think you've got to offer? It's the only way I have to make my mark. You've made your mark with us. Thomas and Rose and me. But I'm not your mother. Insane. Why? Oh, chatter, chatter, chatter. You've no idea. And always, always about the wedding. Dorchester tonight to dine and dance. This should fit you. Don't wear it anymore. We bought it off the peg. Tonight. I'm not sure that I approve. Rose lent it to me. Ginger ale without the ginger. Father, some food, dear? I shall telephone the kitchens at Scotney. They can send him a cold cut of beef. Thank you. He can get quite ravenous when he's writing. You don't really believe he's going to achieve anything, do you, dear? We've been expecting a breakthrough every day. You're his daughter. That's your prerogative. James Mortmain has done his work, my dear. The well is dry. Of course, it doesn't matter two pins. Now Rose will marry him to money. Come with 
without warning and take away the stars. If we must live for the moment, love till the moment is through. After the Jossie Neal. that song, get them to play it again. There you are. Now why aren't you dancing? My shoes don't fit. Ah, thank you for your letter. You did a very necessary thing. Come on. I suppose we should get in practice for the wedding. Best man and bridesmaid. I'm not going to the wedding. Neil been offered a partnership on a ranch in California. Have to be there to sign the papers. Next week. Nobody said. Nobody knows. Yet. Do you hate England, Neil? Do you hate us? England's okay. You're okay. It's me. We're just all wrong here. flowers in the bathroom for the night, will you? I put that card in the bedside drawer. He sulks if I don't keep every single one. You don't love him at all, Rose. Do you? No, I don't believe I do. It's a shame, really. He wears me out. Every second of every minute of every hour that we're together, he wants and he wants and he wants to be loved with every fibre of his being. Can't explain it. You explain it very well. Do you want me to tell him for you? Tell him what? I'm still going to marry him. That's a wicked wicked, wicked thing to do. More wicked than helping me make that ludicrous crinoline dress. Oh. More wicked than taking Neil for a swim so Simon had a chance to catch me alone and propose. It was like something in a book, a game. It wasn't real. Oh, grow up, Cassandra. You've had meat on the table every day for weeks. That's real. You've got silk stockings and French perfume, too. Should you decide you've got the nerve to use them? Use them for what? To trap a kind, good, sensitive man into marriage and destroy him. Cassandra. You're in love with him. With who? Simon. My fiance. <laughs> that is all we need. Do you think I wouldn't give him up? Do you think I wouldn't throw the whole thing in his face if I thought he'd have you instead? I know you wouldn't. I know he wouldn't. He thinks you're just a funny little girl. I am not greedy, Cassandra. I am not selfish. I'm not just doing this for myself. Don't go. You mustn't go. What will I tell everyone in the morning when you aren't here? You're already living a lie. Tell them what the bloody hell you like. And then go into your bathroom and count your peach-colored towels. We have played too many games with love. And I don't know any of the rules.
I wanted Rose to marry into money. I willed her to fall in love with Simon and then wanted it all undone because I was jealous. I have betrayed her and I hate myself because I love my sister. That'll be three and eleven plus sixpence for admittance of dog. Sixpence? They're banned. It's a fine. I've lost my purse. You should have thought about that before you ordered cutlets. I'll be waiting by the door. And I want my pencil back. Will you let me help you? Could you just lend me tuppence for the telephone? it is. I was offered that part in the film. Will you take it? Haven't decided. You unhappy with me? I'm unhappy with myself. And Rose. Rose is a bad girl. In what way? She's just a bad girl. A lot of women are. Sometimes we're bad without meaning to be. You're not a woman yet. Unlike Leader. <sighs> She's been very good to me. But I don't love her. I love you. I know. When we're in the woods, I wondered if you love me too. I'm really sorry. Is it Neil or Simon? Which one are you in love with? Simon. Cassandra. And it really, really hurts. Marry me. I can make it hurt less. I can earn good money now. I don't love you, Stephen. I don't love you. like some hideous party game. Everybody's dancing and nobody's getting the prize they want because it's all third hand and second best. I can't bear it. about, Father? I was supposed to believe that an author must allow his material to marinate, to become seasoned, tempered before it can be worked with. Elspeth Cotton doesn't believe you'll ever write another word. No, you don't believe I'll ever write another word. I've been working very hard. You've hypnotised us all into turning a blind eye, Father. We accepted everything you did. We let you lock yourself away. For me, secrecy has always been the essence of creation. And what have you created, Father? In the last 
12 years, what have you created beyond poverty and despair? I am the head of this household. I'm entitled to respect. You aren't respected. You're indulged. Why don't you just write something? Yeah. Uh, God. I lost my temper. I'm not myself. This is yourself. This is why you went to prison. This is what you did to Mother. No, Cassandra, it is not. Do you think we can't remember because we never talk about it? I'm not going to discuss it with you. Oh. <laughs> well, you're Topaz. You've driven her away. You've driven everyone away. Except you. I'm staying here. I'm going to sit in this chair and watch you and wait until you've written something down. Your mother used to do that. This is worse than prison, and it might go on forever. I have to talk to you, Mr. Cotton, before it's too late. Writing somewhere new can be inspiring. Come on. Where are you going? I think this might unlock you. Supplies! What? We'll let you out when you've finished 50 pages. 50 pages? It took me a year to, to write 50 pages of Jacob Wrestling. It's really good that you're feeling so angry. Harness the rage! Just write the cat sat on the mat. It'll be a start. What the bloody hell do you think you're doing? Don't you dare leave me here, you bastard brat. Now come back here! Come back here, I tell you! thing. I have put my father back in prison. It may be the end of him. Is Rose here? No. She's run away. Do you know where she might have gone? I love you. Stop. Don't hate me. Stop. Rose. It's from Walberswick. Let's go. We had a fight the night I was in London. I said some terrible things to her. Not everything in the world is your fault, Cassandra. Not everything in the world is your responsibility. I would have liked for you to have seen a proper sunrise. This is a crisis, Simon, not a treat. It's where we had the barbecue. The day when Neil said 
Have you ever seen such a change in a girl? She was being herself. That was the only difference. She was happy here. That's what brought her back. There's a light on at the end now. Neil's here too. They haven't had time to get married. They hate each other. The very thought of you, and I forget to do the little odd and everything. <laughs> we were going for a swim. And I knew then that this was love. Because my heart was breaking for him. will come. What if it never does? I don't know. I don't know. You look so tired. Do I? Do you think I don't notice things? You never say. I'm not as articulate as I pretend. For a while, the whole world thought otherwise, and I was ashamed be so mute in things that mattered and to be called a genius. You are a genius. I'm an ordinary man and I'm not invincible. You haven't failed. I failed your mother. I knew she was ill, Cassandra. I knew when I went for her with the cake knife and so did she. Don't tell me. She had said... She had said I didn't care. She accused me of lacking tenderness. And she was right. I couldn't make her secure. I couldn't, I couldn't make her feel loved. Even when she was dying. <laughs> his heart and let himself out. <laughs> oh, I would give every word I ever wrote to have this moment with her. She would like that. Would she forgive me? She would say she understood. I don't expect you to forgive me. I know that. I thought I was gonna lose you. Again. I wouldn't let that happen. It's good we can be civilized. Yes. Mother's pleased about that. You see, I saw Neil kissing her the night he lied about the bear. I saw Rose kissing back too. Was that before she slapped his face or after? She never slapped his face. I went to his hotel, as I believe. 
Things would come right if just one person told the truth. Rose has never been so happy in her life. I didn't do it for Rose. I did it for you. So you could have Simon. Can we get a move on, please? This way, everyone. Come along. See you in the cab. I'm scared, Cassie. You're in love. You know I'm telling the truth this time, don't you? I know. I want you to be this happy, Cassandra. I want you to know what this feels like. I know I'm supposed to throw it and everything, but it's only got a bit of ribbon round it. I'm afraid it might fall apart. Or well, your miss, your Mrs. Cotton will catch it. <laughs> So my sister departed for the new world. Just knock. Read this. lives seem full of possibility. Work on the novel continues. Passages are being published in a highbrow magazine. Topaz! Get yourself up here, woman! Now! The cat sat on the mat was not a nonsense. It concerns a child who is learning to read and is symbolic of a journey towards understanding. The key to all knowledge comes in words of just one syllable, apparently. Hello? Hello, anybody home? I'm planning a critical essay on your father's new work after the excerpts are published. The whole novel could take its time in coming, you see. Things have to be kept alive. I suppose you mean father's reputation? I mean everything I've come to love here. England matters too much. I'll never give it up. Even if you go back to America? Even when. I wish I could take you with me. Would you come? Would you? Not if you're still in love with Rose. How can you be, Simon, after everything she did? Because I don't have a choice. Love is like that. Do you think I don't know love is like that? I'm sorry. We could be good companions, Cassandra. We could read poetry together. I could play you music. You'd make me laugh. Wouldn't that be a nice little life? It wouldn't be enough. I don't ask for ecstasy. I mean, enough for me. Simon, I don't want to go through life like my mother, afraid that I'm not really loved, even if it meant I could go through life with you. I can understand that. You know, I'd love to see America one day. Did circumstances ever prove favorable?
I will come back. You're just not favorable now. You were always wise beyond your years. No, I wasn't. I used to be consciously naive. Perhaps he meant it. Perhaps he will come back. But everything feels fractured and my heart is bruised. Still, better all that hurt than to have known no pain. Learnt nothing. There's only the last page left to write on. I fill it with words of just one syllable. I love. I have loved. I will love.